Let's turn our Bible to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. We'll look at verses 10 through 12. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. The title of the message is, Everyone Shall Give an Account. Everyone shall give an account. Amen. Everyone. everyone. Yes. That means everyone. Yeah, you, me, everybody. That's right. Everyone shall give an account. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. The Bible says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12, so then every one of us, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? Father God, thank you for saving us from hell by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the England and Holy Ghost, whereby we are still until the day of redemption. Amen. Thank you for local Bible in church where we can congregate to praise you, worship you, and to listen to your word. Father God, we ask you that you will fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, giving the liberty and the freedom and the authority directly from you to declare the whole counsel to us. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us take heed to your word. Help us hide your words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Help us not to be distracted. Keep us safe, Lord God. And help us to be mindful that we will give an account of our lives to you, Lord God. And put a fear in us each and every single day, each and every single moment. And those who are listening online, pray that you'll be with them. Bless them, Lord God. We ask you that you'll be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone shall give an account. When it comes to accountability, it's subject to giving an account, according to Webster's Dictionary, is responsible for one's actions, thoughts, everything else. Accountability comes down to everything that you've done and what's the result of it. People talk about responsibility. Yes, everybody's responsible for something. But however, accountability is the fact of what the results have come because of your actions and your thoughts. And as a Bible believer, and these are written to believers because it has judgments that are Christ in it, and it also shows that many of the new versions have changed the word from Christ to God. That's why people cannot distinguish between judgment seat of God and judgment seat of Christ in new versions. As a Bible-believing Christian, and again, there's a big if this day and age. If you don't know where you're going after you die, if you don't know if you're born again, if you don't know if you how you got saved, then there's a problem with you. Yes. yes. You may not sit in front of the judgment seat of Christ. You will be in front of judgment seat of God, yes. great white throne judgment. Yes. And in that judgment, you'll be sent down to eternal lake of fire. Yes. You'll burn in hell for eternity. Yes. And obviously, there's going to be smart aleck in Christians out there who talks about different deep doctrine. But in general sense, when people think about white throne judgment, you stand there, you will be sent down to eternal lake of fire once and for all. Then you have to ask yourself, where will I be standing at the judgment? Will I be standing at the judgment seat of Christ, or will I be standing at the great white throne judgment? And if you can't answer that question, you have to make sure where you're going to stand. This message is not going to be apply to you if you're not saved. You could do whatever you want. You could come to church every single day. You could do good works. You could try to lead people to the Lord. You could do everything that a Christian is supposed to do in the word of God. But you're not a Christian. Amen. Because you're never safe to begin with. Right. That's why people always get confused. 
And God is not the God of confusion. Right. Devil is. Amen. Devil want to confuse people left and right. Yes. So as you listen to this, think about the reality of accountability. That's unavoidable in the life of a believer, but it's also unavoidable in the life of unbeliever. You're going to be accountable. That's why Bible says in verse 12, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to whom? To God. This statement strips away all of your excuses and all of your external blames. There will be no excuses. You know, as, we, as Christians, we often forget that final judge of our life. It's not the pastor. It's not your friend. It's not your brothers and sisters in Christ. Who is it? It's Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to be the final judge. You know, accountability in this life is critical because if you don't think about it, then you're not going to be a good Christian. Because you're not going to be accountable with anything. What's this world about this day and age? It's all about everybody else. Blame everybody else. You are accountable for certain things in your life. As a father, as a mother, as a child, you know, you are accountable. As a brothers and sisters in Christ, as a members of this local church, you are accountable for something. Your actions and your thoughts. Charles Spurgeon said, you are not responsible for the conversion of the world but you're responsible for the light which you have. If you're saved, you are the light of this world, and you're responsible. Spurgeon recognized that while we're not responsible for the outcome of others, you are not responsible, think about it, we are undeniably responsible for our own actions, your decisions, and your obedience to Christ. I mean, how obedient are you to Christ? I mean, do you even think about being obedient to Christ on a daily basis? I don't care if you're obedient to me. I don't care if you're obedient to anybody else. You have to be obedient to Christ. You know, sometimes you always think about, okay, who should I be obedient to? Who should I please today? Who are you trying to please today? Is it your wife today, husbands? Not that it's wrong, but is that your number one priority? What if your wife is the wicked devil herself acting like it? Oh, wives, is that your husband, that whom you're trying to please? But what if they don't want to serve God? What if they're not, their last thing they're on their mind is to serve God and please God? You have to understand and you have to recognize that every decision we make, every action that we take, it will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And Bible says, knowing the terror of the Lord, you know, you have to be scared. You have to be terrified. Yeah. It's not a reverence, right? right. No. It, it, it's not going to be like, oh, you know, all rosy at the judgment. Okay. It's going to be like a real trial right. that you see. People are going to be judged for whatever they've done after they gotten saved. Think about it. For some, you've been saved for a long, long time. For some, you've been saved even for a few weeks to a few months. But everything you've done after you've gotten saved, you'll be judged. Yes. Not just your actions. Every thought will be judged. Amen. I mean, that's the scary part. Yeah. Think about all the dirty thoughts that you have. Think about yeah. all the anger that you have. Think yeah. about all the malicious, think about all the sinful thoughts that you've had yeah. since you've gotten saved. Since you've been saved. And if you divide up the time, right? 365 days, divided into hours, but divided into seconds. For some, it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of seconds that you're going to be judged for every thought that you've ever taken. Like, oh, man, why is she like that? Why is he like that? I mean, look about verse 10. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Because a lot of Christians just want to judge each other. They're like, okay, unsaved people, they're who they are. You know, so you have this haughty mind that, okay, I'm better than them. You're not in the first place. You and I are just saved by grace. Amen. Last thing you want to say in front of a judge is that, you know, I grew up in a certain household, so I'm better than them. <laughs> I mean, that's a farce, right? Yeah. Some people, oh, I used to live in luxury, so, you know, I used to look down on those people. Right? 
you think judge is gonna say, okay, let me give you credit for living a you know, better life than others in the past. No, you'll be judged exactly the same. Yes. Then why dost thou judge thy brother, right? Yeah. I mean, well, what's it to you, right? You know? And when it comes to judging things, it's not about just judging that brother and stuff. A lot of people like to judge the ministries, right? Yes. Like, who are you? God bought local church with his precious blood, and he, you know, have it at many different places. Yes. And you're like, oh, you shouldn't be run that way. Who are you? Right. Exactly. I mean, you think you're better than God? Uh-huh. That's the attitude of all those, you know, Israelites who are murmuring and complaining. Amen. When God put Moses as the head, yeah. leading. Oh, Moses shouldn't be doing this. Moses shouldn't be doing that. You know, there should be, you know, more better food, right? You know, we should have a better sleeping accommodations, right? Yeah. You know, we, we, this is just not good enough. Who are you, right. right? I mean, when it comes to accountability, you have to look at yourself. Who exactly are you? You're just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. You're less than nothing according yeah. to the word of God. Yes. Who do you think you are? That's why people become haughty, people become proud, especially Bible believers. Since you know so much good doctrine, you know dispensationalism, you know King James Bible, and you think you're somebody, always remember you are nobody. Amen. God uses nobody. Yes. And people who's accountable, they realize they're nobody, right? That's why every action that they take, they think about, am I being obedient to my Lord and Savior? Think about it. If I think I'm somebody, I'm like, okay, I'm not accountable for that area. You know, even though you see a, you know, trash there, right? It's okay. It's not mine. I'm going to make sure somebody else takes care of it, right? I'm going to write a letter to my pastor that why is that place so dirty, right? You could have done something. Right. What are you going to do? If your home is on fire... Because it's the duty of my husband to put out the fire. I'm just going to let it burn. You're foolish. You'll never do that. You don't realize that as a body of Christ, as a brothers and sisters in Christ, we're all in it together as one. It's not time for you to start judging everybody what they have to do, what they're not supposed to do. Leave it up to God for that one. Yeah. God is the judge. And then God will let the light shine where it needs to be shined to be corrected. Your job is to do your best wherever you are. Yeah. And if you could make difference, if you could take actions, take it. Right? And if it's right according to the word of God, do it. But also, you don't want to be that person who does it to get all the limelight. Right? right. You know, there are always people like that. I mean, unfortunately, that's human behavior. That's what humans like. Where's my applause? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Give it to me, right? Uh, I opened the door for Sister Jen today, you know. Why isn't everybody talking about it, right? Oh, you know, I cleaned the pew today, and you know, I did it slowly so that people could see, right? <laughs> well, how come everybody, nobody talking about it, right? I thought I said this clearly to somebody, in the group of people, and they should have said something. Stop looking for credit, right? All credit is due to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. There, you, sh- you and I shouldn't take any credit at all. Right. I mean, that's the, what? That's like a Lucifer mind, right? I mean, he was just created. I mean, he was a cherub. I mean, he was over the throne. He was in charge of music, yeah. right? I mean, you do realize how important music is. I mean, it prepares people's heart. Sure. That's how we sing, right? Preaching is the important, but next to that is the music. Yeah. That's why instruments are important. Yeah. That's why specials and singing is important. That's why when you sing before sermons, you have to sing it from your heart. Nice. You got to get your mind ready. But you do it because you want some glory, right? Oh, I'm singing so well today. No one has come up to me and said, you did a good job. You blessed me today, right? Well, what's wrong with you? 
right? Do that outside. Go to those, you know, additions then. I'll give you all the places. There are newspaper out there. I don't, I don't know if people even read newspaper nowadays, right? You know, there are like uh, ads out there in the internet. Just go over there. Church is not a place for entertainment. Church is not a place for you to get glory. You know, this is a place for you to actually get right with the Lord. No more thing. Why? I preach, I come to church, you know, I'm preaching to myself. is because I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to find that little speckle. I want to find that dirt in me that I need to get right with the Lord Amen. and be cleansed of, you know. That's why, you know, whatever you do in the ministry, at home, wherever you are, if you want to be accountable to God, yeah. you have to do it from your bottom of your heart. Yeah. You have to do it sincere, with sincerity. You can't be doing it because... You know, I have a really, really big talent. That's what I'm doing. God does not use those people, right? right? You could sing, you could reach the highest notes ever as a human being. It might sound nice to the worldly people, but Holy Spirit, God's not going to bless it. And it's very, very see-through, transparent. You know, God's going to make you look like a fool in front of people. That's why, you know, as a Christians, we must face accountability in our walks with God. You know, you know, in every Christian walk, you know, we have to face our accountability. Martin Luther said, you know, think about this statement, what Martin Luther said. You have as much laughter as you have faith. What does that mean? When you're living a life that's accountable to God, you have a lot of laughter. Sincerity. Your conscience is clean. You know, sometimes we talk about it. But however, as Christians, a lot of times you get convicted by the Holy Ghost and you don't act upon it. You know, yeah. That's why you don't have laughter and joy in your life like you should. It's all fake. You come to church and then you're like, hello, brother. Hello, sister. How are you doing? You're in your Sunday clothes. But man, outside of church, you're the most miserable being out there. Oh, man, man you're, you're, you're just so miserable. It's like, man, what's my life? You don't pray, you don't read the Bible, you know, you don't witness, but you're like always complaining to God, what's my life? How come there's no joy in my life? Again, who do you think you are? You're nobody. You don't deserve nothing. You must go to the Lord and then find joy by giving account to the Lord. Think about it. If you and I are to realize that we are being accountable in our life, to our Lord and Savior, how can you not have joy? You'll be full of joy, right? The reason you don't have joy, the reason you don't have laughter, the reason you're full of worry, the reason you're full of all this depression and everything, you know, the reason you feel like your life is going nowhere is because problem is with you, yes. always. Everybody will always complain about their circumstances, that's why, what's the number one thing about America right now? They don't want to be accountable for anything. Think about politicians. They're, they're the worst. They don't want to be accountable for anything. Yeah. They say, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be what? You know, keeping promise to everything. But when it comes to accountability, they're not. They haven't done anything, majority of them. And elections coming, yeah. right? Yeah. They're giving a lot of promises. But who's going to really keep it and be accountable for it? Right. Very few. Very, 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 very few. Then how can you be more accountable, you know, in your life? Number one, you have to seek self-examination swiftly. You have to seek self-examination swiftly. You have to examine yourself. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. That's something that you and I lack. We like to examine others. We like to examine everybody else but ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. The Bible says, Examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves, knowing not that, knowing not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ in you except ye be reprobates. You know, so you have to prove yourself. Some people like they don't even know if they're saved or not. That's why we prove folks who come to our church. 
That's why we ask if you were to die right now, are you 100% sure you'll go to heaven? Yeah. That's why we ask, are you born again? That's why, what are you trusting to go to heaven? Because you, you have to prove your faith. Amen. Yes. And you get offended by it, something's wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. not safe. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong with you? Are you that proud? Are you that haughty? Are you that full of yourself that if someone were to ask you if you're saved, you get offended? We met thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in this ministry. People who's full of pride, many people who aren't saved, that's the first thing they say. I go to church. Who are you to ask me? Right. Just between me and God. Oh, yeah? The Bible says, I mean, it's your testimony. Yeah. I mean, you know, how are you going to lead to people if it's only between you and God? That's a joy. I mean, how am I going to know if you're saved or not? Right. Why should I listen to you? You're telling me that it's a mystery where we, we will, you'll never get to have assurance. Then you're Presbyterian. You're Calvinist. <laughs> right? Amen. Same. You don't know where you're going, and you're telling me where to go. No, it doesn't make sense. That's why you have to, if you're listening, you have to examine yourself. First, examine your salvation. Amen. Right? Don't be fool. A lot of people who's going to church will, be, will end up in hell. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A lot of people reject brothers and sisters coming up to you, trying to you know, prove your salvation. Well, our church stand is never saying that you're not saved, right? It's just based on your testimony, right? Yeah. You got to have a baseline. You got to start somewhere, right? Can you imagine if I say, you know what? I'm going to heaven because I'm speaking in tongues. Right. I'm going to heaven because Jesus talked to me last night, yeah. right? I'm going to heaven because I had the hurricane Holy Spirit in me, <laughs> right? Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! I don't know how, how that hurricane came, but it just came one night, wow. right? You know, no Jesus Christ involved or anything. Nah. I'm going to heaven. That's it. Okay. Wow. I'm a fool. Amen. And that person's according to that testimony, they're not saved. Right. Right? right? So if you don't have the right salvation testimony, just examine yourself. That is the true accountability, your personal examination, and it starts with your salvation first. Yes. Do you know why a lot of people get turned up by our church? And our brethren, right? The first thing they do is they, if I, if I can't do it, you know, they grab you and then make sure that they ask you about salvation, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because that's most important. Yeah. We may never see each other again, but at least one thing we want to make sure is that you know where you're going. At least hear the clear plan of God's salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that reason, many people don't come anymore. And it's not a minus to tell the truth, right? You always have to understand. Little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. Christ bought the church with his precious blood. That's why we need to keep it pure. We need to keep it holy and precious, right? Our, again, I always have to remind everybody, our ministry is not about numbers. God takes care of numbers. It's about quality. How much, how you want to serve the Lord as each individual. If we only had one person, ministry will still go, yeah. right? When I mean, there's one person to preach at, right? And then it just continues, right? Even if like everybody becomes apostate, even if I become apostate, Lord's going to keep the ministry going yeah. because that's his will, yeah. right? But as Christians, as the so-called Bible believers, we have to make sure that you have that right salvation testimony yes. in you, Amen. right? Yes. You can't, you can't have the same testimony as Catholics. No. Two of us witness, Mormons, Amen. and we're, we're not different. Right. You can't have the same testimony as, you know, Hindus of the world, Muslims of the world. No way. How are we, how can you be sane? Right. Right? I mean, if someone says, okay, because this is a very common testimony of Catholic folks, I mean, I was Catholic in the past. How do you know you're saved? How, how do you know you're born again? I was baptized. Red flag. Yes. Ring, ring. I mean, 
that's not that's not a good testimony. No. Because billions of Catholics, they were baptized, you know, mm -hmm. when they got converted, if they were adults or when they were, you know, infant baptism. Right. And they think that's born again. Yeah. They think that means, you know, I'm saved. You're not. No. You know. You can only have spiritual baptism by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. That's it. Amen. And the physical baptism is your actual testimony. Yeah. It has nothing to do with salvation. Right. Then, if something that has nothing to do with salvation, which is a physical act of baptism, and if you say it as your salvation testimony, can you honestly tell yourself you're saved according to the Word of God? No. That doesn't add up. No. That seems like it's not Christ only, no plus works, salvation. Sounds like Christ plus action, yeah. Christ plus my works, which equals works by salvation. Right. Then you're not saved. Amen. Again, who knows, right? It's between you and the Lord when it comes to your heart. Yeah. But don't try to fool people thinking that you're saved. That's the worst mistake people can make. Yes. You don't know where you're going after you die. And you're like, pastor, brother, sister, I'm saved. So don't ever talk to me about it. <laughs> okay, we're not going to talk to you about it. I mean, you have your freedom of speech, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not here to beg you for it either. We're not like other churches out there, certain you know, Baptist church where they have to tell every new congregation member you're not saved. Because you didn't, you know, get saved through our church. <laughs> and then they're trying to take your salvation away, try to hold you, right? You leave our church, remember, you're not saved. I mean, that's a, that's a farce, too. The yeah. Bible says, you know, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. You know, that's it. But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, right? Yes. And then, so if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the best way you knew how as a sinner on your way to hell, trusting his precious blood to wash away your sins, believing that he's got and accepted in your heart, not in your head. Everybody knows it in their head. Devils yeah. knows it in their head. Yes. But in your heart, you did that at one time in your life, then you're saved. Amen. But when is that time? That's how you have to examine. Yes. You can't be like, oh, you know, when I was like, you know, going through the high school days, you know, those four years, one of the days from those four years, you know, oh, wow, that's a lot of days, you know. It's almost like telling your wife, you know, I think we got married between year 2010 and 2015. Somewhere in there. Yeah, you know. It's like if someone were to ask, you know, when did the funeral happen? Oh, you know, like, you know, between 2015 and 2020. And you're telling that to someone, they're going to feel like, oh, there's no credibility in your words. Yes. Right? Again, you have to examine. Examine yourselves. Right? You know, Bible says in Psalms 139, 23, David said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. When was the last time you actually prayed to the Lord to really search you? Right? I need a lot to be searched because I forget. I don't, my brain's not the best. As a human being, all of us, our brain's not the best. No. So you need to ask the Lord to truly search you. Amen. Think about it. There are certain sins that I know I committed, but I don't remember. Same here. I have to ask the Lord to search me, help me to remember so that I could get right with him. Amen. I love for, that's the Holy Spirit in us, yeah. tries us and they know our thoughts, right? So we have to go to the Lord and examine ourselves. Yes. You know, Jonathan Edwards, you know, famous preacher of the first great awakening, he had a personal resolve to examine himself regularly. That's it. You, saw, you say, oh, that sounds like so simple. Well, you need to have a resolve. You need to have a conviction and determination to make sure that you examine yourself regularly, yes. like all the time. Yes, sir. His famous resolutions were written as a guide to ensure that he was living a life accountable to God. And that's good stuff. Yeah. He actually write things down. Man, 
have I been accountable to God? Have I been accountable to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You know, people say, I, mean, I could remember things, so I don't take notes. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> because I've said it before. I can't do it. I was so foolish. You know, in my younger days, I thought my brain was really good. You know, I, I'm, I'm doing good in school and stuff. I'm like, and then someone asked, and I learned my lesson. I can't remember nothing, yeah. right? So you take notes, and then you be accountable, right? You're like, okay, I need to be accountable for 10 things in my life. Now let me remember. You're not. I said, you write things down. I mean, nowadays, this new generation is all about iPad, you know, this laptop, and they write it there. You do whatever you want, right? You know, I'm just going to be old school, and I'm just going to write it down. You have to be accountable. You have to seek self-examination swiftly. Yes. If you don't do it today, when are you going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Again, you do exam- examination of others very, very, very quickly. Yes. Yes. That I don't have to preach to you because you're good at it. Right? Amen. Everybody is really good at examining yeah. others. Amen. Right? Even right now, you're just looking around and see, what's that brother doing? What's their sister doing? You know, what's that little kid doing? Right? No, you, you, you need to examine yourself. Yeah. What am I doing? Think about what others are doing. Yeah. You know, think about yourself first. And secondly, you know, to give account to the Lord, you, know, you have to submit solely to Scripture. Submit solely to Scripture. Amen. How close are you to the Word of God? 2 Timothy 3.16, we're all familiar. The Bible says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Our accountability hinges on our submission to the Word of God. If you're not submitting to the word of God, you could say you're accountable in every other area, but you're not. You have to be accountable with submission to the word of God. I mean, this is our standard. This is our guide. It tells exactly what to do. And you follow exactly what it tells you to do, then you'll be good. You'll be in good place. But the Matter of the fact is that too few of us actually submit to the Word of God. Yes. Right? Failure to submit to the Word of God not only makes you unaccountable to God, but it leads you to devastating results and consequences. Yes. You know, you're going to reap all that sin. Yeah. You're going to sow all that sin, and then you're going to reap it one of these days. Yes. Like yesterday, Harvesting good meat was really good. After, you know, our brothers were sowing, you know, good seasoning, good meat, you know, good, you know, what is it, level of, you know, heat. But when it comes to our Christian walk, if you don't submit and if you're not full of the seasoning of the Bible constantly, then you're going to fail. Your accountability at the judgment set of Christ, it's going to be hard. Yes. It's going to be sad, and it's going to be very, very fearful. Yes. The Bible says knowing the terror of the Lord. You have to understand, Lord God will send the soul to hell by not accepting Christ right now. Yes. A soul to eternal hell, lake of fire. Yeah. Amen. Man, that's a scary God. Don't you think he's going to make sure that he fairly and righteously judges us? Yes. For what we've done after we've gotten saved? I mean, one of the examples that we need to learn from is King Saul, right? He disregarded God's commands. He disregarded. He did not submit to the word of God. What happened? I mean, he lost everything. He's one of the greatest examples of not to do. Right? You might sometimes start out well, but if you end badly, it's over. Right. Thank God that you and I won't burn in hell if you trust that Christ. Yes. I, mean, I still can't believe anybody would take chances, right? 
at least that you should never take chance. Right. No. Know whether you're going to heaven or hell. You have to submit solely to the scriptures. That's why your, a lot of the arguments can be dissolved very quickly if you have the word of God as your final authority. Amen. Right? Oh, this doctrine, that doctrine, blah, blah, blah. But what does the Bible really say, right? Your feelings, my feelings, her feelings, his feelings. What does the Bible say? Amen. Final authority, just do what the Bible says, yeah. right? If you offended a brother, talk to each other. Resolve it, yeah. right? You know, if you're full of envy and jealousy, get right with the Lord, yeah. right? That's not what God wants you to have, right? Just go to the Word of God. You know, John Wesley, we know John Wesley, founder of Methodism. Yeah. He emphasized living according to the Bible. You know, some people say that he was probably the most holiest Christian right after Apostle Paul. Right. That's how holy John Wesley tried to live his life. His commitment to scriptural holiness was evident as he famously declared, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this very end, he came from heaven. He has written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. Oh, give me that book. That's it. And like, you're going through any issues in your life. You're like, how can I be accountable to God? Go to the book. Go to the book. Start examining yourself according to the word of God. Right? Then you will be able to be accountable to the Lord. I mean, you'll be able to settle some things in your life. I mean, tell me about it. All of us have things to settle on a daily basis. Yeah. Some hasn't settled with the Lord. It's been years. Mm. How long are you going to tarry, right? How long are you going to put it off? Man, God does things very swiftly. He just does it. But if it's time to judge your sins, if he does it swiftly right now, where would you be? Are you going to lose all of your testimony, right? Are you going to lose the ministry? Are you going to lose the family? What's going to happen? That's why as God gives you and I warning after warning after warning through the preachings through the word of God, you have to act upon it. Yes. You can't just be hearers only. Right. You got to do something about it. And thirdly, if you want to be accountable, you have to speak soundly with sincerity. You have to speak soundly with sincerity. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Christians are accountable for every word that comes out of their mouth. Every word. Every idle word you have to give accountable as well. You know, don't get me wrong. We have good times, right? You know, with the brothers and sisters in Christ. But you have to understand, every word that comes out of your mouth, you're going to be accountable for it. Every word. That's why, you know, if there's any dispute, we have to understand where it originated from, whose mouth it came out of. It doesn't matter what kind of intention you had. It doesn't matter if other person misunderstood. But if it came out of your mouth, you're responsible. But what does speech reflect? Speech reflects the condition of our hearts. So what you say, you say it because it's coming from your heart. What's inside of you eventually will reveal itself. That's why you can't be saying like, oh no, I hate that brother, I hate that sister, I'm just joking. You're not. You came out because something's inside of you. Because you are jealous, you know, because envious, there's some, you know, hatred, anger. That's why it came out. Yeah. You can't joke yourself a, out of, you know, judgment. That's why you have to watch whatever you say. But again, just because you watch your mouth, it's not going to stop you. Why? Because it's all about your condition of your heart. Yeah. If your heart doesn't change, your mouth will never change. Only thing your mouth is just keeping it shut. Yeah. You can't shut forever, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, you're going to say stuff that's inside of you. That's why you have to always think about 
you know, your speech. How, how's my speech? He said, accountable to God, right? right? Are there any idle words that come out of my mouth, right? That means something's inside of you yes. that you need to change, right? You're like, oh. I mean, even like vain words you might say, because we are in Romans chapter 14, 10, 12, where, you know, there's judging going on between the brothers, you know, some dissension. If you say some stuff about brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And if it's not good, right? Then you have to check your heart. Yes. Even if you're joking around, yes. right? Again, you're like, oh, why is she dressed like that today? Why is he dressed like that today, right? I mean, there's certain things, I mean, I guess it just comes through your head. But you shouldn't be dwelling on it. You shouldn't be digging a well and then put that there so that you could always find it. Yeah. You know, if it's wrong, just get right and don't have thoughts like that. Amen. And you can't be the other way either. We have certain people who's like, hmm, let's see who's going to judge me today. That Bible, Baptist Church International, all self-righteous church, you know, King James Bible, only dispensationalists, you know. Let's see what they're going to tell me today. I'm going to put an earring here today, you know. I'm going to put a nose ring here today, you know. Let's see what they're going to say. And that kind of heart will eventually show as well. You know, God's going to judge it as well. So both ways. Think about you know, when it comes to your speaking, what kind of sound comes out of you, right? You know, you have to do it with sincerity. You know, when, when the word sincere comes, that means that you are doing your best. You know, sincerity. Yeah. Doing things with sincerity. Then when it comes to speech, you have to sincerely look at your heart. Yes. If you sincerely look at your heart, then everything that comes out of your mouth will be pleasing to the Lord. Amen. If you are doing it for the Lord. But if you are doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. a lot of things will be judged. Yes. A lot of things will hurt people. A lot of things will hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the worst things to happen to somebody or human being is that you're so self-righteous that when you feel like people are judging you, you feel so, you know, frustrated. You're so bitter. You're so angry. I'm a holy person. I've been a Christian for many, many years. I mean, I was, I was somebody. How dare they? Instead of going to the Lord, thinking about their conversation, man, something I must have said, yeah. you know, hurt somebody, hurt you, Lord. Instead of examining yourself like we discussed, you have that full bitterness. You have just complaining, murmuring heart. And you're like, mm, it's not me, Lord. It's never me. Man, what an attitude. Yeah. That's why you go to, if Lord tarries, you go to your grave as a bitter Christian. Mm -hmm. You might have been joyful Christian, you know, sometime. But it's how you end. It's how you are right now. Yeah. You know, don't go back to like five years ago when you were so close to the Lord. You can't be talking in past tense all your life right. as a Christian. Sometimes it's a blessing to other people. But if that's all you have and there's nothing going on in present tense, man, you're not right with the Lord. Right. Something's missing in your life. That's closer work with the Lord Jesus Christ. Something's missing in your life. You're not being accountable to God. Something's in your life. You're living in sin. Something's in your life. Your condition of heart is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's broken. But you Thank God that you have opportunity to get it right. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you and I are still breathing, the fact that we could still think, we could still speak, yeah. we could still be alive. Yes. We have opportunity to get right with the Lord. Amen. I mean, John Bunyan, you know, famous author of the Pilgrim's Progress, was in prison for preaching without a license. But he never compromised his message. Amen. It's been a blessing to many, many people, yeah. right? He knew that God will hold me accountable based on my actions and thoughts when the words and the, when the trials come my way. 
When trials come your way, when hardships come your way, what's the first thing that come out of your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Why me? Yeah. How about them? How about her? How about him? Why is it only me, Lord? But you have to understand, there are always person who's going through it worse than you yeah. in this world. There's always someone going worse than you yeah. in this world. Just, just remember that. And lastly, and if you feel like give accountable to the Lord the right way, you have to stand strong in service. You have to stand strong in service. Every believer, every Christian is accountable for the service of God. Yes. We're not to serve God with eye service, right? right? Don't do it because people are watching. You have to serve him with your own integrity, honesty unto the Lord. Yes. Especially when people aren't watching. Amen. Especially when you're by yourself. Yes. That's the true measure of accountability. Yes. And we use this verse all the time, Colossians 3.23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. When there's parable of talents, there's parable of pounds, right? Each servant was accountable for what was given to them. Those who faithfully served were rewarded, while those who did not, they got what they deserved. As I end this message, right, think about what Paul has reminded all of us, what God has reminded us through his word. You and I will give account of ourselves to God. And it's inevitable reality that every action, every word, Every thought we have to give accountable. We have to give, you know, accountability to God. So you have to regularly examine yourself. Yes. Brethren, I mean, can we do that? I mean, I have to do it too. We have to examine ourselves regularly. And we have to make sure that our final authority is the word of God. Yes. We have to submit to the word of God. And we have to speak with sincerity. You know, no more like fake anymore. No more hypocr hypocrisy, right? If you're going to talk to anybody, do it with sincerity. And you and I have to serve God wholeheartedly. No. Ravenhill, Ravenhill said that the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. We have the opportunity of lifetime to serve the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ. But we have to do it within this lifetime. You want to do it after you die? <laughs> I mean, when are you going to do it? I mean, that is a very profound thing. You know, our life here on earth is just but a vapor, and one day it will vanish away. Yes. But one thing for sure, we're going to stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ, and we have to give account of what we have done for Him after yes. we've gotten saved. And I'll finish with this. This is what John Bunyan said. You have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. I mean, are you always seeking your own ways, your own limelight, your own pleasure, and your own gain? Or are you actually navigating your life where you want to give glory to the Lord always and uplift other brothers and sisters in Christ and be accountable before him? Your life's testimony will be judged, and all of us will see it one day. How will you be found? Will you be found as a well done, that good and faithful servant, or will you be ashamed? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are accountable, Lord, for every thought, every action, every word, Lord God. And when it comes down to it, it's condition of our heart that determines it, Lord. I mean, do we really examine each heart every single day? Do we submit to your word, Lord God? I mean, do we do things with sincerity? I mean, are we joyful in serving you, Lord? Heavenly Father, help us to reflect, examine, confess. Whatever we need to confess in our life and get right with you, Lord, and be accountable to you. Be an accountable Christian, Lord God. I pray that you're blessed. Everyone here who's listening, who weren't able to make it, I pray that you come soon, Lord. Bless the rest of the services today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.